We're back with Red Skeleton. We were supposed to have another guest on this show, but this man's so incredible, we looked at the other guy and said, go home and come back tomorrow. <laughs> we have some questions. I can come back. No. <laughs> That's a promise. Yeah. Okay. We have some questions from the audience. You have a question you want to ask? Yes. I know you've entertained a lot of U.S. presidents. Yes. Which one is the most uh, enjoyable that you remember? Well, uh, there were two. Nixon had the greatest sense of humor of any of them. Oh. And from Roosevelt, I was the official master of ceremonies for six and a half years at the White House under the Roosevelt administration. And um, I did a horrible thing to him one time. Uh, I, I went over and I said, the people at the theater don't think I know you. And uh, he used to send for me, send his car over, not all the time, about maybe once a month, sometimes twice a month. And I'd sit there, and while he fell, uh, fed fella, his little dog, I'd sit there and tell him jokes and stuff. So I said, the, they don't think I know you. Now, I know that you and the, and the Secret Service go over to this little restaurant at, uh, on Tuesday nights. If I'm in there and uh, you come over, will you at least say hello? He said, why, certainly, Red. You know, I'll be happy to. So I go, I don't tell the, the, the acts on the bill that uh, I'm going to where the president's going to be. So I wait, 10.30, nothing happened. Quarter to 11, nothing happened. 11 o'clock. Nothing happened. I said, gee, I'm glad I didn't tell him. All of a sudden, the door opens, and in comes these Secret Service guys. And he came in, and he was in his wheelchair. So he comes by, he says, Red. I said, please, Frank, not when I'm with guests. <laughs> <laughs> but Nixon, to give you a, an idea of the a sense of humor that Nixon had, he gave a birthday party for Mamie Eisenhower, <laughs> and he sent out these uh, invitations, $1,000 a plate. And down in the corner, it said, Roquefort cheese, 50 cents extra. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's it is funny. very funny. <laughs> is it true that you keep a daily record of things that have happened to you and what yes, you've learned? Yes, all day long. I write down five of the most interesting things that happened, five things I never knew before, and five of the most humorous things that have happened through the day. You do this every day? Every night before I go to sleep. Will you be writing uh, your autobiographies? I've got, I've got over 1,600 books. 1,600? Uh, it's a little long. Yeah, <laughs> but ever since I was 10 years old, I've kept notes every day of different things that happened. So That's when these, uh, I've had several books written about me, and I've never met the people that wrote them. But w <laughs> will you write one someday? Well, I won't. Maybe Mrs. Skelton will put this stuff together. Because uh, not that I'm ashamed of anything I did, but I wouldn't want to relive that stuff again, you know? Like, and the people ask, how's uh, humor changed? I'll give you an idea how humor's changed. In uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, I got the show arrested. I was in burlesque at the time. Now, in burlesque in those days, they had children in the audience. There were no vulgarities or anything. But uh, I did this one joke. We would, satire is what we did. Burlesque in those days, we did a satire of the gay 90s, and we did a satire of Cleopatra in this road show that I was in. So uh, we're singing this song, Tell Me Pretty Maiden, are there any more at home like you? And I, we're all in those uh, old gay 90 outfits, see? And I kneel in front of this girl, and I said, I'll show you how humor has changed. I said, would you like to take a little walk? And she lifts her skirt to her ankles, and she says, I think it's going to rain. I says, what? She says, I think it's going to rain. I says, I'd like to see it clear up. And we got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a photographic memory? Your memory is just, you do. Yeah, my, do. my wife, I, I, I tell the people, uh, she got a photographic mind. She yeah, it's not developed yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can, now I'll see you. Now I, I, I can tell you what, uh, uh, where we met, where you sat. In the, you sat in front of the, uh, uh, up in the room, a special room. They had it set up with food. You were in front of the table, and, and, and there was another lady sat next to you. He was married to the man who was putting on the big show. That's right. And across to you in a chair on this side was uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher, and I was seated over on this side of her, and, and uh, Havana, Havana. Havana uh, was right there. Uh, she was in a chair all by herself, you know. That's amazing. And my wife says to me, if you look at her, you'll go blind. <laughs> Yeah, so I said to her, I'm going to risk one eye. Okay. We have to go to commercial. We have to go to commercial. We'll be back. Don't we're, apologize. By the way, uh, we're back. This is our last segment coming up with the amazing, the talented, the wonderful Mr. Red Skelton. <laughs> <laughs>